Survivor's Guilt. Today we'll be looking at 2011's Venom and deciding what the chances are of you facing Survivor's Guilt. Venom, starring Jessica Morris, Olivia Crawford, and Roberto Sanchez. Written by Joanne Canning Boris and directed by Gary Breslin. Venom is a movie about a lousy mom struggling to mend the relationship with her daughter while dying in the middle of the desert and being pursued by both every snake in the desert and also cartel members. We open to zooming in on an anthill with an off-screen helicopter crash and on-screen aftermath complete with CGI fire and CGI blood. Why bother adding a helicopter crash if you can't afford it? The movie treats us audibly to the death of the first person, which is the pilot, when he is shot dead for not landing the helicopter in the middle of the desert. The second death we don't find out about until later, but the third death is when Rojas kills the character simply known as Mexican Thug after a disagreement about what to do about the money. But not before he's able to shoot Rojas in the shoulder. <sighs> and Rojas grabs the money and leaves despite his injury. Then we are treated to opening credits, in which we learn that Helen is not only a lush, but also a cokehead. Oh gross, three frames per second. We also find out that Helen is a pop star, and her daughter Lily is not a fan. Yeah, check it out. Come on, sing it with me. And after this sample, neither am I. It also turns out that Lily's not a fan of her mom in general. And it turns out Helen pretty much kidnapped Lily while going AWOL on her tour. What was that? Well, Lily, that's the sound a snake makes when you run it over with your car. That's either the greatest dead snake effect I've ever seen, or they ran over a real snake. Hey, Helen, Tom is calling. Is that your manager slash husband? Helen? Yeah? So now you answer. Where the hell are you? Need to get away for a while. What do you mean, getting away? Did you realize how f***ed you'll be if you walk away from this tour? Where's Lily? She's with me. Have you been drinking? No, I have not been drinking. I'm all boring and sober now. So where are you then? How can you do this to me? What is this, 20 questions? Luckily, she chucks her phone when she's angry. You! But Tom is still committed to playing 20 questions. Helen, where the hell are you? Well, I'm glad that's over. Oh shoot, look out! Yup, and her problems get even worse. Oh god, you bit me. It can get worse, I mean, you could even die. <sighs> Great. Nothing like half a snake bite to mend years of substance abuse and neglect. Lily finds her mom's stash. Just a hint, if your daughter knew you were an alcoholic, you weren't doing it right. How did you know I had that? My mom. You're supposed to lose it like six months ago. Betty Ford, remember? Oh, God. Yeah, I, I, I just leave it in there as a reminder, okay? Like a safety blanket. And just so we don't forget what this movie is about, we get a shot of the snake! Look, maybe we should just, we should go back and just look for my phone, okay? That's crazy talk. We don't have the time. Okay. Well, I don't know. Maybe we can just walk to the ranch. Maybe it's just, it's a few hours away. Maybe, maybe we can get help there, right? Wait a second. They drove for like two seconds before they crashed. In what world is walking for a couple hours better than spending 30 minutes looking for your phone and calling an ambulance? 
Watch out guys, there are snakes on your trail, and not just the reptiles. Now we are introduced to Vigo and Cristo, who are looking for Rojas, the pilot, and Mexican thug. What do you think? I guess it's about 15 miles that way. I don't want you to guess. I want to know where the chopper and my money are. Helen and Lily take turns trying to kill Helen with bad decisions. Yeah, I think it is. I think we should check it out. You wanna, you wanna leave this road? Yeah, we should. And after leaving the main road, they decide to sit down and use the iPad to reach out on social media and have someone send a helicopter or ambulance or something. Oh wait, no. They use it to research snake bites. We learn at this point that they've been wandering around for over three hours. A sneaky snake sneaks up on them. But don't worry, Helen. Use that iPad to kill it. So the iPad doesn't know everything, does it? <laughs> Run the iPad. Now what are we gonna do? You mean besides using it to research snake bites? And as it turns out, Tom is not done with his game of 20 questions, which, had they made a smarter decision, would have made this phone remarkably easy to find. Luckily, Helen and Lily happen upon this trailer. Unluckily, it's inhabited by a boatload of snakes. Oh no, guys, look out! Yeah, guys, you get out of there. They stumble upon the helicopter wreckage, and Lily narrowly misses getting bit by the snake. Lily, what is it? Don't look. As it turns out, mending a fractured relationship is the best way to avoid snake bites. Then, we get our first glimpse of Desert Rat, as the credits call him, which leads to one of the strangest scenes I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Just as a common courtesy, when you sneak up on someone with the intent of stabbing them, just ask first. Boom! It's nighttime. Desert Rat has been wandering in the desert for so long that he doesn't care what gender you identify as. Where does that stop? Don't worry about it, boy. I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm not a boy. Right, smart boy you got there. Hey, not a boy, remember? Desert Rat lets them know that although she didn't get much venom, they made it significantly worse by applying that tourniquet to her arm. You can get much of it, but you got it in your system. You made it worse. What are you doing? I had to hold this with me. What was that, sir? I had to hold this with me. Sorry, come again? I had to hold this with me. Ah, uh, never mind. Right here in this bit. Oh, gross! So, Desert Rat becomes an exposition angel and lets them know that they must have killed a female snake and gotten her pheromones on Helen, leading to its mate and every other snake to come after them. They brush him off as a crazy old coot, even though he survived in the desert alone all these years. Problem is, if they're gonna avenge the death of a female, the rage is tremendous. Avenge? Like, don't you think that's a little complicated for a snake? Boy, you understand. The whole desert's after you. There's no stopping that. I think you've been in the desert a little too long. Well, I got to get you out of this desert and kill you both. Then, Rojas is still just wandering around the desert. And Desert Rat puts a magical rope around Helen and Lily that must somehow repel snakes. But unfortunately, the dope doesn't put it around himself. Good morning. I don't mean to wake you, but you said you wanted to leave early. Hello. I don't even know his name. Allow me to help you, Helen. It's Desert Rat.
spelled just like it sounds. Wake up. Come on, please. Come on, just stay Mom, back. stop healing me. We're in this together. Let's just get out of here. Well, I still have the strength. No sense in letting his belongings go to waste. Right, Lily? His canteen. Right. Vigo and Cristo discover the dead body in the helicopter wreckage, which, including Desert Rat, brings the body count up to four. There's another body in there. Could be Rojas. Hard to tell. Cristo does his best to figure out what happened. Chopper went down. These two fought over the money. Killed each other as the chopper burst into flames. No briefcase, no Rojas. That's the story. Well, you don't think that's Rojas in there? No. I know Rojas. It's not that stupid. Right, Vigo. No way Rojas is stupid enough to die in a fiery helicopter crash. Cut to Rojas walking along when he goes to take a drink, but oh bummer, no Sunny D. However, just when you thought Rojas was done for, he looks through his binoculars to see two ladies who have exactly what he needs. Go get him, Rojas. Helen stops to give Lily a science lesson just long enough to let Rojas catch up and bully them a little bit and steal their lunch. It should be in front of us, not behind us. Stop! 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 Yeah. Is that what you got? All? Why the food? Lily, give him the food. But they appeal to Rojas' better nature. Our car crashed and we're trying to get to my mom's ranch. What ranch? A place called Sinista Valley. How far? 30, 40 miles. You want to walk 40 miles without water or food? Where are you going? Can you help us, please? Help you? Do I look like your friend? Eh? But to no avail, because he is one bad dude. Instead, he beats the hell out of Helen. And then when Lily tries to stab him, he tries to shoot her, but is all out of bullets. So he makes like a tree and leaves, but not before ditching his briefcase because he likes their backpack way more. But Helen and Lily like that backpack too much, so they follow him to a gross cesspool of scum and villainy that Rojas tries to drink from. There was a bad guy whose water ran dry. I don't know why his water ran dry. Maybe he'll die. But Rojas still has enough energy left in him to go and bury that backpack full of money. Which, if you've ever watched a cat that's kind of a jerk do a half-ass job of covering its own dump and litter, then you've seen Rojas' half-ass job of burying his stolen loot. Helen and Lily continue their hot streak of bad decisions trying to get Helen killed by meandering towards the dying man who just tried to kill them. Which, if you've ever tried to mess with a cat that's kind of a jerk while it's taking a dump, then you'll know how this situation turns out. While Helen tries to drink from that cesspool, Lily watches as a snake enters the canteen that Ro has just tried to fill up, and then she closes the lid over it, permanently entrapping the snake. Rojas then comes back for seconds, and Lily grabs his knife after he distracts himself with Helen, and she stabs him in the side. Despite his injury, Rojas decides that it's time for some water, and grabs his canteen and gets bit, but he grabs his throat? I don't know exactly what's going on here. And judging by that look in his eyes, he is just as confused as I am. Lily has a crisis of character when she realizes that she's responsible for his death. I didn't know I was gonna kill him. What do you mean? What do you mean you killed him? I trapped the snake in the canteen. I, I don't know why I, I did it, I just... Oh, no, Lily, you didn't kill him. What he did was save us. She did save you, but she also killed him. Even without the snake, his health bar was at like 25% when Lily stabbed him, so... They then discover the loot that Rojas was burying, and we find out more about Lily. Apparently, if you die in her proximity, your stuff now belongs to her. Against their worst judgment, they decide to leave the money. Well, most of it. Unfortunately, Vigo and Cristo roll up on them ladies. Don't try so hard, ladies. 
just a waste of time. We get a quick cut to Roaz, who has become a jungle gym for snakes. Helen and Lily continue their fun game of making bad decisions trying to get Helen killed. Vigo and Cristo find the late Roas and decide maybe the lady needs to know who killed him. Helen decides to up the ante in their game and takes a drastic step and dives away from a snake onto some rickety boards. Should've swiped right on that one, Helen. Luckily, one of every type of snake starts making its way toward the hole where Helen is trapped. We've got your grass type, your rock type, that one snake is probably a psychic type since he was at the hole long before they ever got there. Gotta catch them all. Good news for our ladies though, Vigo and Cristo show up at the last minute with the snake's only weakness. Bullet type. Helen and Lily then explain the plot of the movie to Vigo and Cristo. This is ludicrous. Hey, yup. Vigo vows to kill them if they don't tell him where the money is. Lily jumps into the pit to get them to let both of them live. She doesn't know anything. Yes, I do. I know where the money is. How does that help you, kid? And Vigo botches a line. Clever kid. There, that's better. Vigo and Cristo let Helen and Lily bum a ride back to the money. Unfortunately, Psychic Snake also bums a ride. Once they have the money, Vigo has Cristo count it. Count it. Ah, wipe that low. because apparently the only one who should have known how much was in the bag was Rojas. And when Cristo gives the correct answer, Vigo knows then that Cristo was involved with Rojas. Yeah, well, there's that. So here, all of it. Only Rojas knew how much money was it. So Vigo does the only thing he knows how to do, and that's kill Cristo. <laughs> giving us our sixth body of the film. Vigo then makes a funny joke. I don't know who to trust in you. All this stress is making me reevaluate my life in the drug industry. Then, when Vigo moves to ditch the girls in the desert, Helen picks up Christo's gun and shoots Vigo, and then steals his Jeep. Come on, ladies, that doesn't belong to you. He's not even dead yet. But a well play shot from Vigo starts siphoning gas from their newly acquired vehicle. When their gas runs dry, Helen and Lily start walking again. But Helen isn't feeling too great and collapses on the ground where Lily pleads with her not to die. Don't die, Mommy, I need you. Someone will come. And someone does come, but unfortunately for them, it's Vigo. After a short scuffle, Helen gets the upper hand by kneeing Vigo in his snake and then shoving a piece of cloth with snake scent on it into his mouth. Yes, yeah, the scent of a snake. <laughs> She lures a snake to the jeep and traps it inside. Vigo also becomes a playground for snakes, giving us our seventh body. Helen and Lily hide away to a secluded place so Helen can curl up and die in peace. Helen realizes that they ended up back where they started and becomes hopeless until they hear her phone ring. Lily is then able to find the phone, and she answers it. And her dad starts playing 20 questions with hello, her. Hello? Dad? Oh, Lily, where are you? Dad, we really need you. Dad, please, we need help. Just tell me where you are, sweetheart. Venom, with a more solid story, could have been a better movie. A far better movie. The acting was serviceable, even enjoyable at times. The relationship between Helen and Lily was very awkward, which may have worked towards the strained relationship the script called for. 
However, some of their interactions were just the result of not great acting. The story itself was the problem here. The unrealistic and dumb decisions the characters made turned this movie into something to make fun of rather than to have fun with. And the blocking was especially egregious for Desert Rat when he was introduced. There is just no excuse for that. So because of these things, Venom gets a D plus on the soup scale. Now to find out what are your chances of suffering survivor's guilt. This is where we look at the primary characters and the death that surrounds them to see what your chances of surviving would be if you were in this movie. Starting with the dead pilot, the guy in the copter that we find out about later, and the character simply known as Mexican Thug, we have three bodies to start with. Add in the exposition angel known as Desert Rat, and we have four. Then later add in the rest of the known cartel members, backstabbing Roaz, and Cristo, and the charismatic Vigo, and that makes seven dead guys altogether. We are going to assume that Helen lives since the movie ends on a high note. And, despite the fact that we only ever hear his disembodied voice, we have to add the possibly adulterous Tom, giving us three survivors. So out of ten characters, only three survive, which gives you a measly 30% survival rate if you were in this movie. If you were to die in this movie, tell me how in the comments. And also, if you like what you've seen here, check out some of the other videos that I have. And if you really like what you've seen here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Also, leave a comment and let me know what movies you would like to have soup reviewed or survivors guilted. But for now, signing off, this is Soup. Thanks guys.